Hey, what's up everybody? I'm back home safe and sound. I've been back home for about a week resting and recuperating and now it's time to do the post Appalachian Trail through hike gear review video. Okay, so I've got all my gear splayed out. We'll start with the backpack. I used the Osprey Exos 48. I don't think I would recommend this bag for another through hike. It had a lot of good things going for it in a lot of ways, but also a lot of not so good things going for it in a lot of ways. It survived just fine. Um, integrity wise, there was no breakdowns or anything, none of the straps broke. It's just that, um, like there's no um, hip belt pockets, so these were added on from Z-Packs. The belt strapping here would um, not stay tight, so it would unloosen itself. I would have to constantly tighten it every five minutes or so. For like at least the last six weeks on trail, I had to constantly tighten it up. And I don't know, there's not too many bad things about it. It's just not, it's not 100%. It's like an 80% good backpack. On the bottom, I carried um, this little Z seat. I only ever use this like two or three times. I'll probably never take something like this again on another trip. On the inside, to keep stuff dry, I was using um, a Nyloflume liner bag. This worked perfectly. None of my stuff inside here ever got wet. On the front, I had a handkerchief for wiping snot and blowing my nose and anything else. I just threw this in the laundry every time I did laundry. This worked out perfectly. Highly recommended to carry, um, carry some kind of handkerchief. And this little um, pocket knife I bought at the last minute before I went on the trip. I carried this the whole way. Uh, I don't think I ever used this though, but just kind of a basic. It's always good to have a knife kind of thing with you. But I think that's everything on the bag. Let me know if you have any questions about the backpack stuff itself. I don't know how better to explain it. It was good, just not good enough. Now next up is the sleep system. The um, air mattress I used, the Thermarest Neo Air x Lite. I had no issues with this. I never had a hole popped or nothing. I slept a lot of times inside shelters and a lot of people would use um, some kind of protective sheet underneath their air mattress when they slept in the shelters just so it didn't get snagged in a nail or anything, but I never did that. I just slept straight on this in the shelters. I guess I'm lucky, I never had an issue. To inflate that thing, instead of blowing it up manually, I carried the pump sack that came with it. I think this was awesome. Um, recommended just to use the pump sack to save your breath. Pillow. This is great. I loved using the pillow, inflated. This one's from uh, Sea to Summit. And on top of that, when I started the trip, I was using my buff as a pillowcase. I saw that hack from somewhere. But um, I ended up losing my buff somewhere early on in the trail doing laundry. And luckily, I was able to pick this one up from Outdoor 76. They were giving out uh, free buffs in the town of Franklin, I think, is where I got this one at. And this one lasted me the whole trip. The sleeping bag liner bag that I used did not last the whole trip. The original one I got, I think, was a Sea to Summit bag. It was a really lightweight bag, and if you're going to use a sleeping bag, getting a liner bag is the way to go. Because then your bag itself doesn't get um, dirty. You just throw the liner bag in the wash uh, every time you do laundry. This was the replacement one I got. This one is much of a thicker material, more of a, a cold weather one, and this was the only one they had in the store when I went to get a replacement for it. I think this was where um, uh, Hanover, New Hampshire, I think is where I got this one at. This one's really good and fine, it's just, it's heavy, it's much heavier than the other liner bag, so I'll probably for future trips replace this with something a little bit lighter. And the sleeping bag I used was um, just fine. This one was one I got a few years ago from Z-Pax. I think this was their 20 degree sleeping bag, which was overkill, I think, for the AT. Even some of the nights, I think the coldest was just above freezing, maybe 34, 35 degrees was the coldest I ever got. And wearing um, clothes and long johns and stuff um, in the sleeping bag, I never got cold at all. So probably can get away with doing a 30 degree bag um, there are a lot more people that are starting the trail earlier, like in January and February. If you're starting that early, I would go for a much warmer bag, like at least 20 degree. But for when I started in late April, um, this was more than enough to keep me warm the whole time. Next up is the little blue ditty bag that I carried. Inside that was all my miscellaneous stuff. Uh, cork massage ball. I liked having this. I only used it for the, maybe the first week or so on trail. I started getting pain in my feet plantar fasciitis, we'll touch on that in a second, but um, using this, it worked really good. It got rid of the pain that I was getting at the bottoms of my feet, but I really only used this for like the first week or so on trail, 
and then it was just kind of dead weight at that point. Medication wise, Advil's, I've only had to use these maybe twice on trail. It was good to have it, but I've taken a whole bag of some, this seemed a little excess, I never really needed it. I brought some uh, nasal decongestants. I initially had uh, twice this many, but after some point on trail, halfway through, I realized I wasn't really using any of these, so at least I cut it in half and then tossed half of them to get rid of some of the weight, and I never used a single one of these. Um, Emodium antidiarrheals. I did have some issues, if you've seen my whole um, through hike, I did have some issues with um, diarrhea problems on trail, so I'm really glad I had these, and I'm sure they helped uh, from keeping the situations worse than they did get, so that was handy. This bag was the um, sleep aids. I don't sleep too well, and I continue to not sleep too well on the trail. I just continue to wake up like every hour while I'm sleeping. So I brought some like melatonin stuff. I never used a single one of these the whole time. I just kind of dealt with it, I guess. So this ended up getting crushed over time. And as you may be able to see, it's just a little bag, little bag of powder at this point. So I'll probably never carry those again. Nail clippers for clipping fingernails and toenails. This is a must have, I think. And a little pocket knife is also probably a must have. I was using this a couple times for, um, it's got like the tweezers on there, tick removal, other hygiene related things, little scissors, little knife to open packages or whatever. So having a little mini pocket knife is uh, perfect, I think. I brought a little kit for um, eyeglass repair. I never, never needed to use this though. I never had a problem with my glasses. No loose screws were falling out. I carried an extra smart water bottle cap in case I needed it, but I never did. Earplugs for loud snorers in your vicinity of your shelters. This was a must-have. I used this a lot and it saved me from getting uh, more sleep. Um, let's see, first aid kit related stuff. This little bag has got um, the needle and thread and all my patch repair stuff. Luco tape. I only needed to use Luco tape just a few times, like in between my toes as I showed. And that was about it. I think I used the needle and thread to hem up my pants as I started losing weight. I um, just pinched off and hemmed the pants a little bit and that worked out just fine. I think I already got rid of a little, I had a little bag that had um, band-aids in it and I only used one band-aid once when I was coming down from Katahdin and I uh, hit my leg really bad and it was bleeding. That was the only band-aid I ever used on trail. And in this little ditty bag I've also got these little tabs. This is for um, the gator trap, gator yeah, on the back of the shoes, Velcro is the word I was looking for, for the gaiters, you can adhesive stick these guys on the back of your shoes. So I had extra ones as I would buy new shoes. And on shoes, I started out with the um, trail runners. I think I was just stubborn and stuck with those. I went through two pairs over a thousand miles and they didn't work that good. They beat my feet up. I complained a whole lot. Once I finally switched to these current ones, the Oboes, much sturdier boot. These lasted much better. The tread's a little worn down, but that's about it. Um, these things have over a thousand miles on them, 1200 or something like that, and they're still good. The front of the shoes are coming apart a little, but there's really nothing that wrong with them. The insoles need to be replaced. They're still just crummy and falling apart, but that's about it. I could probably go another 500 miles on these shoes easily, so I would recommend something tougher. Recommending shoes though in general is really hard because everybody's got different feet and you don't really know how your feet are going to react to the trail and the different conditions until you actually go hiking a couple of hundred miles in all kinds of different shoes and all kinds of different terrain. So these work best for me and that's about all I can say. Now next up is electronics. I kept all my electronics gear in this little dry sack. I got this one from z -Packs. The camera that I was using to shoot is the uh, Sony ZV-1. I think it was brand new-ish about a year ago before I started the trail and overall I like it. It suited all my needs for what I wanted to accomplish and how I kind of wanted to film it. It's got a good flip out selfie screen. Um, has decent image stabilization. The biggest complaint I have with it I think is that it had problems focusing on my face and a lot of times when I was walking and especially if I had my sun hat on it would defocus on my face and it would just focus on the background. It was otherwise pretty good at focusing on other objects in front of it. It's just like when you had a face in front of the screen, it didn't know how exactly to 
focus on that, so it's not that smart. The tripod I was using was from Ulanzi, and that one worked really good as a little mini tripod slash extendable selfie stick, so no issues there. Headlamp I was using, it's the Petzl Actic Core. No issues with this, this one thing worked great. Miscellaneous um, charging cables for the iPhone and everything else. Charging everything, I was using the 15,000 milliamp battery. I could go about five days with um, charging everything that I would need, and that's about as much as I was ever out in the woods. There was one or two times, I think, where I was trying to ration my power a little bit more, but I was able to um, pull it off no problem. Um, okay, the camera has a little rechargeable extra battery that I brought in this handy little rechargeable case, so that was really cool for it. I've got just a basic little wall plug charger with um, two USB ports for charging everything up. This worked it out just fine. I think I started with two memory cards, one in the camera and then an extra one, and then as I went, I just bought more, so I've got all the raw video footage. I wasn't 100% sure on how I was going to tackle that before I left, so somewhere down the trail as I was filling cards up, I was like, I'm just going to buy another card. They're not that expensive. So I've got all the original raw video, at least still. And then for editing everything, I was using my phone. I've got a program called LumaFusion and downloading everything from the camera through the um, little Apple dongle here. Worked out pretty good. Copying, um, once I got everything edited, I would actually make two versions. The master copy in the highest HD quality I could make would be loaded onto the external solid state drive. And then I would recut more of a standard definition version, smaller file size, and that's the version that I would upload to YouTube. But these file sizes for each video is massive. The average high def video I had was about 15 gigabytes, and then just the regular standard version that I uploaded to YouTube, the average video there was like 4 gigabytes, which is kind of had, I had more of a problem compared to other people, I think, with trying to upload their videos and just in the higher quality that I was using, which was also making it more frustrating getting to the different towns and just being unable to upload the videos. So that was definitely a hassle, but I think I pulled it off overall pretty well. I think the last piece of electronics I had was just um, little iPhone earbuds for editing everything and not disturbing other people when I was um, in a shelter or something. And let's do rain gear next. The main rain gear I've got was from Lightheart Gear. These are the pants. Now of the entire time I was out there, I think I only really got rained on. That wasn't really like a light sprinkle. Maybe only five times where I needed to put some actual gear on. I only used the rain pants probably once, otherwise I just kind of dealt with it. My pants got wet and then my pants dried out and they were just fine. So I may never hike with rain pants again. The funny thing is the more I, um, I only really used this for when I was doing laundry in a hotel or a hostel or something and I just needed pants to put on because all my clothes were in the wash, so I would wear my rain pants. And that's about the most I ever got used out of it. I use the top a lot. This is another one from Lightheart Gear. Uh, this thing is awesome. I've heard always people say, like, you're going to get wet and clothes are going to wet out anyway, so just get the lightest kind of thing you can have. It's got the pit zips, and this works just fine. As soon as it stops raining, take your rain gear off immediately because you're just going to start sweating and soaking on the inside. I got these rain mitts from... REI. These ones are um, Gore-Tex. I think I really only used these once at the beginning of the trail when it was super cold and it's in like in the 30s and it's wet. Um, these worked great. So just put these over on top of your other gloves and they kept my hands warm. I probably won't bring something like this again on another trip though. I really only used them once and that's about it for them. This was the backpack rain cover that I used. This worked great over the backpack that I had. Um, no issues there. This was just a really old one. I think I got this thing more than like 15 years ago. So I don't even know what brand it's from, but it fit my backpack fine. And then uh, we'll, just, we'll hit this one as well. Just the other random piece of gear, a bug head net. This worked awesome. This is literally a lifesaver when you're in the time of the season and the location where the mosquitoes are really heavy because they were really, really bad in some areas. So you definitely need some kind of head net for bug protection. 
And I guess clothes is next. This is the clothing dry bag I was using, one of the larger Dyneema bags you can get from Z-Packs. This worked out just fine. If anything, I was overprotective with all my gear. Everything was in its own individual stuff sack. It was inside the um, Nyloflume bag, inside the backpack, and then I had the outer rain cover on top of that. So I had multiple layers of rain protection. Nothing ever got wet when it was inside my bag, so that was great. Now, let's see. These were the warm um, long johns I was wearing. These were awesome. I had tops and bottoms. These are from Small Smart Wool, just a thin pair. Yeah, these were great. Other clothes, underwear. I had one hiking pair and then two extras of the ex officio boxer briefs. These worked out just fine. Same thing for the socks. I had the one hiking pair and then two extras in Gingy liner socks. I think using this liner sock combination on top of the um, thicker wool socks was a great combination. Helped reduce, uh, reduce any um, blisters that you might get. I used the long and thicker wool socks. These ones are from, uh, oh, these are the ones that have the um, free guaranteed for life. Um, darn tough, the darn tough socks. And um, those socks I've actually owned for years before and they're still going strong. They've lasted on um, the whole through hike. The sun hat I used was great from Outdoor Research. There's a lot of people that hike without hats, but I would highly recommend getting some type of hat uh, for sun protection, I like the one with the brim all the way around. You don't get sunburn on your back, your neck, or your ears, or anything as well. My cold weather hat was just a nice little um, beanie. This one is from uh, Mountain Hardware. This thing worked great. I slept in it if I had to. Very comfortable. The gloves I got were from Z Packs. These are the lightweight possum down gloves. These work pretty well. Definitely good for keeping your hands warm. But as I was hiking with these and using my trekking poles, they're kind of fragile. So inside the palms, they started to rub out and the palms were kind of gone. So these barely made it through one through hike and I didn't even wear these that much. So they're fragile. If you're in a year where it's really cold and it's really wet and you have to wear a lot of gloves, these might not last the whole through hike. Here's the town shirt I had. This thing made it just fine. I'll probably keep using this thing for future trips. Let's see, other cold weather gear. Let's see, I would wear this one first on top of my hiking clothes. This one is from Arcteryx jacket. I was kind of torn because I'm carrying two warm-ish weather jackets. I've got this thing, which is awesome, but I also have the puffy jacket from, um, this is the Mountain Harbor Ghost Whisperer. This thing works great, but because I was using this one so much, I rarely would ever kind of double them up. Only maybe right at the beginning where I would wear both of them. But I feel like I should have only had one of these. I guess I use this one more, but I would. this one's much lighter. So maybe from now on, I think, for any future hikes, I'm probably going to leave this one at home and just use the lighter down jacket. Um, other hiking gear... The main shirt I was using the whole time, this was just a generic brand, random, um, I think they're called like sports sun hoodies, very lightweight, long sleeve. Again, I like using something like this for uh, super white, or super light. It is provides just enough warmth where if it's really cold and you're hiking, this thing alone will actually keep you pretty warm. And also if you're hiking in 90 plus degree temperatures, this actually keeps you relatively cool and moisture wicking, you don't get sunburn on your arms. So this thing was awesome. This is probably one of my favorite pieces of gear. The pants are the ones I'm wearing right now. These are the, um, I think they're the Columbia Silver Ridge. I had these the whole time. They've got the zip off to where you can just wear them as shorts, but I never did that. If uh, doing water crossings and stuff, I hiked them up my legs and that's about all I did for rolling the pants up. But no issues with these things. They dry out extremely fast, which is really surprising because that was a couple times where you're soaking wet and right after it stopped raining, within five minutes of just walking, it would be completely dry. So I highly recommend these kind of pants. They're super lightweight, and they don't um, stain or anything easy. You spill stuff on it, it dries out super fast. And I think that's about it for clothes. Maybe one or two more things. These were the gaiters I used in conjunction with my shoes. 
think I also saw a lot of people that didn't really use gaiters, but I highly recommend these. They keep um, debris and random stuff out of your shoes. And with the Velcro stuff that they give you, you can attach them to any shoes, even if the shoes themselves don't come with the little gaiter traps at the bottom. So I had to adhesively stick on the little Velcro tabs to my shoes, but Dirty Girl Gaiters are these ones and they work great. Um, let's see. Camp Sandals. These ones are from Sharma, I think, which is more of an expensive brand, but these was like the only company where I could find something like this that I was looking for, where it had the, the straps that go all the way up around your shoe and ankle so it can hold on good. Changing out these, doing some water crossings. I didn't really wear them too much around camp though, but these were great, light enough for what I needed. Oh, maybe the last thing I forgot to mention, this is um, what I considered also a piece of with my rain gear set. I would highly recommend a hat that has a bill on it if you're wearing rain gear that has the hood. Because I noticed with the hoodie and stuff, it wouldn't sit straight on your head. It would kind of flop around either higher or lower. And it would, the heat from your head would condensate on the inside and it was getting water coming down in front of my face. But if I was wearing the hat in conjunction with the rain hood, that would keep all that contained, so you gotta wear something here. But yeah, even though I had um, three hats total, I guess. The sun hat, the rain hat, and the cold weather hat. Next up is all the cooking gear. Here's my main cooking setup. I just kept using the little carry case that it came. This was the Tokes Titanium. I think this is the 600 milliliter, which was just enough water. It could easily boil and contain two cups, which I think was the most I ever needed to boil. I would never go any smaller than this. A lot of people, I think, were using like the 700 milliliter pot, which is slightly bigger, and that'd be just fine as well. So inside of this, I carried an extra handkerchief for just wiping the thing out. I never cooked inside the pot. I only used it to boil water, and that just kept everything cleaner. And that's where I stored my lighter. This thing is still full of plenty of fluid. All I used it for was just sparking it once, and that was it. And the main stove I was using was from, um, this is the MSR Pocket Rocket 2. This thing worked just fine the whole time. I never had any issues with it. I'll keep rocking this thing. It worked great. I always carried the smaller of the fuel canisters. I never carried the big one. The big one was just too much. I really only cooked um, a couple of times a week on average. I never cooked a breakfast. Um, I never cooked anything for lunch. I would only cook dinner every once in a while when I was doing either the instant mashed potatoes or like a mountain house freeze-dried meal. Some other times I would just have something that would not require cooking. So I actually didn't cook that much compared to other people, I think. So I would have those mini fuel canisters would last a month or more, which was a little above, above average. For the rest of the cooking related items, I was using the Tokes Titanium Long Handled Spoon. This thing worked out perfectly. For water filtration, I was using the Katadyne Bee Free Water Filtration Bag. This thing was awesome. The only biggest downside is that it um, grows like um, some kind of bacterial fungusy whatever would grow on the filter itself and then sometimes on the inside of the bag and it would just clog up and the flow rate would um, just diminish to almost nothing. You're still getting filtered pure clean water out of it, it's just that on the filter itself would start getting gunk growing on it. I don't know the best way to clean this, like rinse it and bleach or something, but I never really experimented with that. I just bought a new bag. So I think this was, was the third bag I went through and I can definitely tell from the few weeks that I had this on trail, it's definitely half the flow rate than what it started as. This was a little homemade heater pouch that I used for keeping my food warm. This worked out fine. The food bag and little rock hanging kit comes from Z-Packs and uh, no issues with this stuff. The rock sack kit is um, doesn't last very well if you load it up with rocks and you're slinging up into a tree and you keep missing and the rock sack bag slams back into the ground over and over and over again and that's where it's getting the rips and the holes from. But if you can make it on the first shot then you don't have to worry about that. So it's not very durable because you're going to be missing a lot anyway. Let's see, last hygiene stuff related items. I was using the Deuce of Spades trowel for digging cat holes. I had some um, duct tape around the handle 
and I never needed to use the duct tape. A lot of people put the duct tape on the trekking poles in case they needed to patch stuff. Uh, I just used it on the handle itself because the candle can be kind of um, hard to hold on the edge itself, so it kind of smooths out the edge a little bit, makes it easier to dig, so that worked out just fine. And having a bag for toilet paper. I think the last little miscellaneous item here was the wallet that I used. This one also from z a little Dyneema waterproof wallet. They sell the really small ones that are about this big, just enough for credit card size. I got the bigger size, the phone size one, and this worked out fine for the phone size that I have. If you have some of the bigger, latest iPhone and such models, I don't think it's going to fit in this thing. Um, but for the smaller iPhone that I have, this worked out just fine. And now I think the last items will go over the tent. This one was from z -Pax. This is their one-man tent. I think this is called the Plexamid, I think was the style of it. And overall, it worked out okay. It worked out well enough. I don't think I'm going to use this again on other through hikes, maybe just on some day trips. But it, um, I had difficulty setting that up sometimes. I never really had a good design of a pitch of a tent, and I even had multiple people who were used to Z-Pax products. The duplex is probably the most popular, and that seemed like the easiest one to set up. Of the, of the ones I saw, and a lot of people setting them up, they seem to set up like picture perfect, like just like how the design is set up, where the bathtub floor is sitting off the ground like this high, and it's got the nice, cool, tight walls on it. Mine never really looked like that at all. I never could get it pitched any higher than just like an inch or two with the bathtub flooring, no matter how you set the pole up and, and you pitch it. And I've even had other people look at it who are familiar with z -Pak's products. And they were like, yeah, you're, it's just a bad design or the cut of the fabric itself is just off. It just doesn't set up good. Maybe I just got unlucky and had a bad, um, a bad one that came out from manufacturing. I don't know. It just didn't work like it should. It worked well enough. It just didn't seem like it was all the way there. But um, trekking poles I used was the cork handled ones from Black Diamond. These were good. I never bent them. The um, locks are still fine. Everything's good on them except for the tips. I don't think I ever showed, but I was talking about how I eventually broke the tip off. But you can see this one's kind of up and bent at an angle. Both of them are bent pretty good. And then this one just sheared off completely. And I kept hiking with it and kind of wore it down a little bit even further. But I would almost recommend, first of all, take the baskets off, even the smaller baskets that these have. I would re-tip them completely to just have them straight because I was catching these on a lot of roots and rocks so when you're going and it would just get right at the right angle where it would catch and then it gets stuck on the ground. So no baskets whatsoever. And then it'd probably be better just with some kind of rubber tip on there, even though I think the rubber would eventually wear down. But um, rubber tips would definitely work you're going to be on rocks and stuff 90% of the time anyway. But overall, these are good trekking poles. Um, I may mess around with trying to get them re-tipped, see what I can salvage out of them, but these worked out great. So I think that just about covers everything I took. There was one item that I've already thrown away that I didn't mention, which was the chamois cloth that I took. I was primarily using that for wiping down condensation on the inside of my tent, and that worked out just fine. The problem was, Unless you immediately completely dry out the chamois, um, I would wring it out and dry it out as much as I could and then stuff it back in my bag. And then after a few days of just being moist, it would get moldy and stuff. And so eventually there was mold on it and it was just so bad, I just tossed it already. So it's good to have a chamois cloth, you just have to dry it out immediately. But I think that's everything. Um, for future hikes and stuff, I'm going to keep planning on trying to slim down weight as much as I can, but overall it wasn't bad. I never really weighed my gear fully loaded at all different times, but I would guesstimate I was somewhere in the 25 pound range fully loaded with say four days of food and water. But if you have questions on anything, go ahead and comment gear related questions in this video and I'll try to answer them as best I can. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you have questions. We'll see you guys next time.